Sit up.
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. It's a joy to be here with you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because your word is quick and powerful. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Your word can go to the deepest part of our heart. And create change. So Lord, I ask you will speak through me today. Be a blessing to your people. Transform their lives by your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. My message today starts with a question in my heart. How come some believers are doing well in their work with God and others are not? And I see some believers. They are thriving in the things of the Spirit. They are growing. They are moving forward. They are living victorious lives. And on the other side, I see some believers. They are struggling. They are not making much of their work with Christ. And I ask myself, what is the difference? What, what makes the difference? You see, some people can answer that question and say, well, maybe God makes some people to be strong Christians and some to be weak Christians. But I know that is not true. Because the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10, that God does not show favoritism. Acts chapter 10 verse 34 and 35 specifically. Apostle Peter spoke there. Apostle spoke there. He said, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. God does not create some people to be strong and some to be weak in their work with God. God's intention and expectation is every believer will be strong in the Lord. After all, the Bible says, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. That's what Ephesians 6.10 tells us. And God doesn't give us a command that we cannot carry out. He tells me every believer should be strong. That's how God wants it. Also in Romans chapter 2 verse 10. Romans chapter 2 verse 11, sorry. The Bible says, God does not show favoritism. God is not partial. Hallelujah. Yes. So it's very important to know that. 
That God is not the one that creates strong Christians and weak Christians. As a matter of fact, God has given all of us everything we need to be strong in the Lord. We all have equal inheritance in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We all have equal access to the Holy Spirit. We all have equal access to God's provision. He has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. He has given all of us equal access to his power and promises. So how come some believers make much of their work with Christ? And some don't. Some people can also argue maybe it's circumstances of life. Maybe some Christians are strong because their conditions allow them to be strong. And maybe some believers are weak because of their conditions. But I also know some of the greatest Christians in life are, came out of very difficult conditions. Some of the best Christians we know I've had a very rough life. Many of the hymns that we sing, they were written by men who went through tragedies in life. Some of them had tough situations. Yet out of their difficult situation, they rose up to be giants in Christ Jesus. So I know it is not challenges that make people weak or strong. So the main question now is, how come some believers are always striving? Striving, thriving, thriving. Abounding. And excelling. Why some are just wobbling through life? What makes the difference? Are you ready to know what is the difference? Are you eager to know? If you, if you are ready, say, tell me, please. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So I'm going to give you two main reasons that determine how strong we become as believers. Number one reason is our view of God. How we see God. Affect how we live our life. Hallelujah. Yes. It's very important what we know of God. Our knowledge of God. And our understanding of God. You see, everybody is a theologian. Everybody has a theology. 
Umuntu wese wicaye hano afite theology. So there are people who don't even believe in God at all. Hari abantu tunagira nabo batizera niyo mana na gato rwose. We call them atheists. Abo tubita ngo ni atheists. So that is their That is their theology. Iyo iyo ni theology yabo ndizera imana. Their theology of God is it doesn't exist. Theology yabo ku mana bavuga ngo nta mana ibaho. But we are not in that category. Ariko twebwe but there are people who believe that God exists. But is uninvolved in our lives. They think he exists. But he's far away. They, they think he exists. But he's far removed from us. You see, people who know that about God, they act differently. And there are people who understand that God exists and is interested in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. But how we see God is very important. That is why as believers, Knowledge seeking to know God must be the greatest pursuit of our life. Our greatest prayer should be, Lord, I want to know you. Because your knowledge, your knowledge of God will affect how you see life. Your knowledge of God will affect how you see other people. Your knowledge of God will affect how you interpret situation and circumstances around you. Your knowledge of God will affect how you pray. Your knowledge of God will affect your faith. Your knowledge of God will affect how you spend your money. Hallelujah. Amen. Your knowledge of God determines your behavior. Hallelujah. Amen. So people, believers who know God, they are always striving. Usanga bashisha mumuka. They are always excelling. They are always waxing stronger and stronger. Daniel 11.32 Daniel 11.32 Daniel 11, Those who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who know their God, they are strong. So we can conclude people who don't know their God. Shall be weak. Did you see the difference now? So our knowledge of God is dependent largely on, I mean, determines how strong we are spiritually. And our knowledge of God determines our response to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to show you a parable in the Bible. This is Matthew chapter 25. This is Matthew chapter 25. We're going to read from verse 14 through 30. Hallelujah. Amen. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 30. 
Matayo igice cya 10 duhere ku murongo wa 14 Jesus tells us a parable here Aratubwira umugani hano We call it the parable of the talent No mugani wi taranto I want to show you something important from this parable that, that, that illustrates what I'm talking about. So here, the Bible says there is a man that went on a journey, a rich man that went on a journey. And he called three of his servants. And he gave each of them bags of gold. The bags of gold here represent money. So he gave the first servant five bags of gold. And he said, I'm going on a very long journey. I I want you to take these five bags of gold and trade with it and and, and do business with it. And when I return, you are going to give me the account. And he called the second servant. He gave him two bags of gold. Hallelujah. Amen. And he told him, I'm going on a journey. I want you to trade with these two bags of gold. And when I return, I will give, you will give me the account. And he called the third servant. And he gave him one bag of gold. And he said, I'm going on a long journey. When I return, you will give the account. Now, why did he give one five, one two, and one one? The, ba- the Bible said he did it according to their abilities. Hallelujah. Amen. It wasn't because he was partial. It was simply because he knows their ability. He knows what they can undo. So he gave them responsibility in proportion to their ability. So the Bible says, after a long time, the master returned. And he called the servant to settle the account. So the man who received five gold, came, five bags of gold, came first. And he gave account to the master. He said, you gave me five bags of gold. I traded with it. And I gained another five. Now I have ten bags of gold. Hallelujah. Amen. So the master responded. This is Matthew chapter 25. Verse 21 now. We're going to read verse 21. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Happiness. I want you to pay attention to verse 21. Because we are going to compare it to verse 23. So the second servant came in. Who received two bags of gold. And he came to the master. And he said, you gave me two bags of gold. I traded with the two bags. I gained another two bags. Now I have four bags. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at how the master responded. Verse 23. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. 
you have been faithful with a few things, I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Amen. What's the difference between verse 21 and verse 23? Can anyone tell me? What's the difference? What the master? The different the masters respond to the man with five talents and to the man with two talents. There is no difference. Hallelujah. Amen. You are very good listeners. Clap, clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. So the master did not reward them based on the number of talents. He rewarded them based on their faithfulness. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. And you also see the master invited them into his happiness. The master said, we are going to enjoy this together. That sounds like a good master to me. That sounds like a wonderful master. He gave you money to start the business. You made money from the business. And he said, we are going to enjoy the profit together. How many of us will want a master like that? Hallelujah. You cannot lose with such a master. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's look at the third servant. Hallelujah. Amen. So in verse 24, the man who had received one bag of gold came. And look at what he says. Master, I knew that you are a hard man. I knew that you are a hard man. Look at how his knowledge about the master affected his decision. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I knew you are a hard man. Harvesting where you have not sown. And gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. What makes him to do this? He had a faulty knowledge of the master. How many people have a faulty knowledge of God? And they walk around as if God is not good. They think God is a hard man. They think God is difficult. Some are even angry at God. They think God has caused them a lot of trouble in life. Unfortunately, there are so many believers who walk around with a faulty knowledge of God. And, and that is one of the job of the enemy. To so pollute your knowledge of God. To convince you that God is what God is not. 
akugira ngo akwemeze ko imana iruko nguko kandi atari kwiri and when we have a polluted knowledge of god iyo rero amaze kukwica cyo mu bwenge it affect how we live our lives nawe bigatuma ubana ni imana na it affect our decision making bigatuma ufata ibyemezo nabi it affect how we treat people bigatuma ubana nabantu nabi it affect how we treat the things of god bigatuma nibintu by'imana utabyumva neza it affect our service bigatuma nuburyo uza muri service and that is why many people are struggling in their christian work akenshi ni impamvu usanga abantu I pray today that the Lord will destroy every faulty knowledge of God that you have. I pray that the Lord will uproot every negative seed that the enemy has sown into your mind. Hallelujah! Amen! And I pray that the Holy Spirit will begin to give you a, an accurate knowledge of who God is. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know who God is, your life will be different. You will be stronger. You will be stronger. You will be, stronger. You will be confident. Your faith will be stronger. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, your greatest occupation as a believer is to seek to know God. Is to ask God to reveal Himself to you. So Moses, one of the greatest men of God to live in the Old Testament. He said, God, I want to know you. I don't want to depend on what people have said about you. I want you to reveal yourself to me. In fact, Moses said, I will not go except you reveal yourself to me. So God showed himself to Moses. No wonder Moses was such a successful leader. No wonder Moses did a lot of exploit for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how do we know God? You see, we can have a whole week conference to study about how to know God. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'm going to give you one point. One thing that is very key about your knowledge of God. We're going to read it in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3. Hallelujah. Amen. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. Hosea Gatandatu Umurongwagatatu. We're just going to read a small phrase. It's a very important phrase. A small phrase there. He said, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Did he capture it properly? Yes. Hallelujah. Properly. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You know, it's not everybody that follows God to know God. Some people follow God for what God will do for them. Those people are seeking the hand of God. Some people follow God because everybody is following. 
They don't want to be left out. Some people follow God because they have a problem in their life. And they have an idea that God can heal them. Or God, or God can solve the problem. So they follow God because of that. Well, it's not wrong to follow God because of many of all those things. But ultimately, God wants to purify why we follow Him. He wants you to graduate into people who follow God to know God. Because only the people who seek to know God will know Him. I know something about knowing God. You cannot know God by accident. It doesn't happen accidentally. It, it happens on purpose. Because you are determined to know God. Because you desire to know God. And that desire is expressed in your prayer. That, that expression, that is determined, is ex desire is expressed through your study of the word of God. Then shall we know if we follow to know. So I want to challenge you this afternoon. Follow God to know God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Make knowing God the greatest desire of your life. Make it your number one prayer point. Even if you don't have anything to pray for. You should always pray, Lord, I want to know you. Lord, show yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. I want to know you more and more. Because your knowledge of God will determine your strength. Those who know their God shall be strong and will do exploit for you. Praise the name of Praise Jesus. The Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you getting blessed by this message? So we're going to go to the second point. Hallelujah. Amen. The second point is connected to the first point. Because the second point is your view of yourself. Because your view of God will determine your view of yourself. An accurate view of God will lead to an accurate view of yourself. People who have a faulty knowledge of God they will have a faulty knowledge of who they are. Hallelujah. Amen. So you will see that people who know God, they are always very, very confident. They have a good self-image. They are unruffled. 
They are cool. Baratush. They are calm. Baratush. They are collected. Kandi, inyigi shoza wabafite zila kosoze. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of their knowledge of God, kubera ukoba menyimana, they now understand who they are in Christ. Biyawa haye kwiso wano chirigo wabaribo muri Kristo. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, one of the problems in life is many people have a very, what is called very poor self-image. You see, what is called self-image is how someone sees themselves. You see, some people, some people have a poor self-image because of their physical look. Some people have swept, uh, poor self-image because of how they think other people see them, right? Some people go through life worrying about whether someone likes them, someone doesn't like them. Some people Much of human problem is lie is tied to their self image. Studies have shown that majority of people suffer from poor self-esteem. And because we suffer from self poor self-esteem, we are not able to truly be ourselves. You see, but people who know God, they derive their self-image from God. Because we are made in the image of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you discover that you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In fact, I'm going to read James chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. James chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you able to, are you there? Yes. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, mm -hmm. for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of a man he was. Urumva, makumnyabiri nagata tungo, kuko uumvi jambo gusa, nhako ribyaryo, amezengu munu, urebeye muma sohe mundo reguamo. Amaze kwireba akenda uwo mwa akagenda uwo mwanya akibagirwuko asa Hallelujah Amen You see what the Bible is saying here? You see when we read the word of God One of the things God is trying to do is to give us the image of who we are Iki Imana ibishaka ibigira ngo twimenye abo turi bo mu ijambo ryayo It's but many people go into the word they see who God calls them they are. But they leave. And they forget what they saw in the mirror. That's the life of many believers. It's a confused life. Just imagine you look at a mirror physically. You look at your face. And you walk away. And you forget what you look like. You'll probably be in a mental hospital if that happens, right? Sorry? I say you will, you will probably go to a mental hospital. You ask somebody to check you out. <laughs> Because it's not supposed to happen, right? You're not supposed to forget how you look like. But the Bible says in the spirit, we forget how we look like all the time. Because when reality of life comes, we forgot what God 
said we were. Hallelujah. And that should not happen to us as believers. Hallelujah. Amen. So our knowledge of God we ultimately determine our understanding and knowledge of who we are. Which gives us self-assurance. Which makes us stable. Causes us to be calm even in, the, in, in times of challenges. Causes us to rejoice even in affliction. Because we understand who we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you glad? That God call you the righteousness of God in Christ. Are you glad your self-worth is not derived from the world, but is derived from Christ Jesus? So I, want, I want to challenge you as I close. Seek his knowledge. And from his knowledge, you will find your feet. You will know who you are. And you are going to become a thriving believer. Living victoriously. Always abounding. Always excelling. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.